Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's 5th grade, Module 7, Lesson 3. I'm going to start off by going over the I can objective. It says, I can add and subtract mixed numbers with unlike denominators and assess reasonableness. The learning objective says, add and subtract mixed numbers with unlike denominators. And the prior learning is that students compared two fractions with unlike denominators and unlike numerators. Students added and subtracted mixed numbers with like denominators, and students solved problems involving addition and subtraction of fractions. All right, so jumping into the lesson on page 157, it starts out with a problem that says Caroline trains every weekend for a track and field competition. She writes down how long she spends running sprints and jumping hurdles. How many hours does she spend training on Sunday? All right, so if you see here, the sprints are two and two-fifth hours, and the hurdles are one and one-fourth hours. And I just wrote all over the numbers, so I'm actually going to delete those circles, but I just wanted you to know where you can find those answers. All right, so for A, it says write an expression to model the situation. So if we want to know how many hours does she spend training total, that means adding. So we're going to be adding those two numbers together. So the two and two fifths added together with my one and one fourth. That's my expression. Now we want to estimate the answer to see if we can get, make sure that our final answer is close to whatever we estimate. So I know that my two and two fifths, well, I know my whole number is going to say it stay a two, and my two-fifths is pretty close to my half. Remember what we did with the benchmarks? My two-fifths would be closest to my half benchmark. So that's what I'm going to go to for my estimate. And when I add it together, my one and one-fourth, if you put one-fourth on a number line, it would be closest to zero. So I'm actually just going to leave that off and just say it's closest to one. Those are my estimates. Okay, so... If I put these two together, two and a half plus one more is going to be about three and a half. That is my estimated answer. For C, now we're going to rewrite the expression in part A using equivalent fractions with a common denominator. Then we're going to find the sum. So let's start with the expression. My two denominators right now are five and four. All right, so I need to be able to multiply both numbers to be the same number. And I know that those numbers are going to be actually multiplying against each other to give me 20. So I am going to take the 5 and the 4, and I'm going to multiply them by each other to be 20. So I'm going to start with my expression. I'm just going to do my denominators for right now added together. All right, so I'm going from 2 and 2 fifths. I know that from 5 to 20, I'm going to be multiplying by 4. That means I need to do the same in the numerator. So the 2 times 4 is going to be 8. And I can't forget that whole number 2 up in front. All right, and then from 4 to 20 is I'm multiplying by 5. So my numerator 1, 1 times 5, is 5. And I can't forget that one whole up in front. All right, then I need to find the sum. So if I add the whole numbers together, two plus one is gonna be equal to three. My denominator is gonna stay 20. And then I have eight plus five, which is gonna be 13. So three and 13 twentieths. All right, let's move on to D. How many hours does Caroline spend training on a Sunday? Well, we just found out the answer. That's going to be 3 and 13 twentieths, but now we're putting the unit, which was hours. And then E, is your answer reasonable? Well, I love this question because I know that 3 matches my 3 in my estimate. So off to a good start there. But my 13 twentieths, is that close enough to half? Well, I know that half of 20 is 10. 
So if it said 10 over 20, it would be the exact answer. And 13 over 20 is pretty close. So I know that my actual answer of three and 13 twentieths is very close to three and a half. So yes, it does make sense. It is reasonable because it was pretty close to my estimate. All right, let's go ahead and flip the page to 158. And again, we're just gonna be working above this red dotted line. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. In the step it out, question number two, it says Jonah's best pole vault jump is seven and one fourth feet. A sign in the gymnasium shows the gym's record. How much shorter than the gym's record is Jonah's best jump? Let's go ahead and show that Jonah's best jump is seven and one fourth. And over in the picture to the right, the pole vault record says eight and seven twelfths. All right, so how much shorter is the, is the gym record than Jonah's best jump? So if we're comparing Jonah's jump to the gym record, we do need to be subtracting, okay? So for A, again, you're just writing the expression. B, estimate your answer. C, rewrite using equivalent fractions with common denominators. And then D, write your actual answer is your answer reasonable and explain. You're doing three things in D. All right, go ahead and try these four questions and then come back so we can work it out together. All right, great job and welcome back. Let's go ahead and go through these. So for A, I'm just writing the expression. I'm gonna start with the record, which is eight and seven twelfths. And I am gonna be subtracting Jonah's actual jump, which was seven and one fourth. Right now I'm gonna estimate my answer. I know that I'm gonna stick with my whole number eight, but look at the seven twelfths. That's pretty close to half, cause six is half of 12. So I'm gonna estimate eight and seven twelfths to be eight and a half. All right, subtracted from seven and one fourth. Remember when we used that number line, that one fourth would have been really close to the zero. So I'm just gonna do seven. All right, and then if I take eight and a half minus seven, that'll leave me with just one and a half left over. So I'm guessing that my answer is gonna be somewhere close to one and a half. All right, so for C, I'm gonna rewrite the expression in A with those equivalent fractions using a common denominator. All right, so from A, I see my denominators are 12 and four. I need to make those common denominators by multiplying them to be the same number. And already I realize I can multiply four to be 12, which means I don't have to change the first fraction at all. Okay, so I'm gonna take my eight, and seven twelfths, and then I'm gonna subtract it, and I do have to change the second one. So I am gonna have that seven, and my denominator is gonna be 12. So I'm going from four to 12, which means I'm multiplying by three, and my numerator is already one, which means one times three is gonna be three. All right, that's my expression. That's all I need for my answer right there. So for D, it says, how far is Jonah's jump from the gym's record? Well, eight minus seven is gonna be one. My denominator is gonna stay 12. And then I can just do seven minus three, which is four, all right? If you wanted to simplify, this is equal to one, and one third because four is a third of 12. Or if you divided each by four, four divided by four is one and 12 divided by four is three. So that is my simplified answer. Is my answer reasonable? Yes. And then explain, well, my one and four twelfths or my one and one third is extremely close to one and one half. So it is reasonable. It was right along my answer of estimation, All right? That is it for this lesson. Go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems and I will see you back for module seven, lesson four.